Today we're listening to New York Radio, working aircraft off the east coast of the USA. It's mid morning. There are some areas of thunderstorms affecting traffic. This hardworking person on 6577 is making sure her flights have the Sigmet. Sigmet Bravo 1 is in effect for one area of thunderstorms with tops to flight level 400, 40,000 feet. And those storms are intensifying. It's one of a number of different areas that have thunderstorms. Here you see the actual text of the segment. Those storms are moving northeast at 25 knots and intensifying. Aircraft with routes near those storms may have to do a bit of deviating left or right to get around them. Nobody in their right mind is going to try to go above them. They're already up to 40,000. They can easily go way above that. An aircraft don't handle turbulence or maneuver too well up at those altitudes. Okay, by chance, do you have segment Bravo 1, sir, or do you need that? Do you have segment Bravo 1? Uh, no, we do not have that. Okay. So this Bravo receiver is panned somewhat to the left. Four, four, five, Frequency 6577. Seven, seven. It's operated by Kilo Uniform 4 Bravo Yankee in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. More on that later. Well, I've brought the levels down a bit on this audio, but it still sounds like it's clipping. I'm not totally sure if that's happening in the receiver down there in Elizabeth City or if that distortion is local in my computer. I'll have to experiment a little more. It's possible that the Kiwi SDR just has some rather hot audio settings. It might be a smart thing to turn the audio level in the Kiwi down just a little bit to avoid some of that distortion. 8846 is the secondary frequency. It is set to the center. And that receiver is located in Fair Hill, Maryland, in the northeast corner of the state. 11330 is another frequency in use for the same area. That receiver is panned to the right. That receiver is located in Raleigh. It's operated by someone in the Transworld Radio Group. They have a lot of receivers all around the world. Mach decimal seven eight. Thank you so much. I have uh, I got at one three four two five level three three zero Mach decimal seven eight four at one four two five. Blame my next end of fuel. This actually takes all of that, fills in a form, clicks send, and it goes into the system as part of the record for that flight. That's used to track the flight, generate estimates. That's one of the inputs used by the computer system to make sure those flights are properly separated on the route. Level 
Is this cell call on 11330? Meanwhile, there's voice on 8846, which we can hear. But we're looking at the waterfall for 11330. Okay, there's 6577. Your signal is pretty strong. Fully modulated. That's pretty good radio equipment New York is using. There's not much opposite sideband in there. Okay, back to 11330. Uh, sorry so there's a map with the SIGMET areas again. Let's go look at a map of these Kiwi SDRs. I'll show you more graphically where these three receivers are located. Let's zoom in and get a bit closer up here. Okay. So, 6577, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Are you showing a child as compulsory or not compulsory? Operated by Kilo Uniform 4 Bravo Yankee. <laughs> it's going to time up because I've been listening for a while. That's fine. The Raleigh receiver. It's got a good SN score of 24 dB. And in the middle, the radio in Fair Hill, Maryland. Fair Hill is operated by Whiskey Delta 3 Charlie. There it is. It's located up in the northeast corner of Maryland. Really, it's closer to Philadelphia than it is to Baltimore with a 24 dB signal-to-noise so ratio. Sorry, I'm still not copying you. Um, so you can use these multiple receivers uh, if you're to listen to one, one, three, three, zero, multiple one frequencies is, uh, for one area, of, or you can eight, spread those radios well. out. Listen to the same frequency from different locations. Or maybe different frequencies, different locations. Same interest, wherever it is. One thing that's important, though, is only use one frequency per SDR site. If you open up multiple tabs from one radio, the owner-operator will notice that. They'll get irritated and they'll ban your IP. Some of these ops are pretty good friends with each other. They might share your IP and you could get banned from multiple sites all at once if you get put on the bad guys list. Yeah, let's take a look at the lightning activity. First, we'll look at North America. It's a very large, intense cluster of storms down in the El Paso, Brownsville area, Central Texas, with lots of lightning. I would expect some tornadic activity down there, too. Lots of puppies hiding under beds. Off the coast, there are some thunderstorms. Obviously, the area covered by SIGMET Bravo 1, and those other SIGMETs as well. There's less lightning activity. These receivers are pretty close together. You can actually hear some of the same lightning crashes from time to time. Yeah, no flight calling here. Please stand by. Spirit Wings 1035. Let's take a look here. Spirit. 
The signal's not that strong. All the others were pretty quiet. I'll just kill those tabs. Let's look around a bit, see what's going on on a planetary scale. I'll turn the sound up first. You'll hear a few pips from the detectors on the overview map. There's also some thunderstorm activity along the Spain, France border area, Western Europe, and Western Russia. Actually, a long line of thunderstorm activity it goes south down into the, uh, almost down into the Middle East. It's over there. Western Russia, Ukraine, interesting places like that. So that's it. I hope this has been interesting and helpful for you to use in your listening. I'll catch you later in the next video.